Hello friends and welcome to a series of lessons where we're going to be going over different types of applications that you can use on your Apple iPad or your MacBook Pro and other devices by Apple. One of these programs we're going to go over today is the Photos application. This is found on almost every single Apple device, but unfortunately it's one of the least known on how to use and how to navigate. So in this short tutorial, we're going to go over how to navigate photos and get a little bit better usage of your Photos app itself. First, I'm going to start off with the Photos icon, which is this one right down here on my screen. And I'm going to click it or tap on my trackpad or click my mouse. Now, as you see, it opens up to the Photos section. Now, the Photos section is basically every picture that you've taken, the time, and usually the date. Now, some of my dates and times will not be on here because I'm using a guest account on this computer. However, a lot of times it will give you very important information of when the photo was taken, the date it was taken, and where it was taken. One thing I always like to recommend first when you first open window, the window is that you change the size of it to fit the size of your monitor. Now, if you notice, mine is not taking up the entire screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse pointer straight down here until you notice that it makes two different arrows. If I click and hold on this, I can just drag this out. Now I'm clicking and holding down and moving my mouse or my trackpad to the left or the right. Some people like full screen view, which is done by hitting the little green button here. And it's all personal preference. I like to have a toolbar, which is this area right here. So I don't usually use full screen view, but it's totally your prerogative if you want to use it. Now, one of the things that you can do is to scroll. You can use a scroll wheel. You can use your Apple mouse by taking one finger and moving it up and down on the very top of the mouse. If you have a laptop, you're going to use two fingers to actually scroll up and down. So I'm going to actually scroll all the way up to the very top here to get to my pictures. And notice we're still in the library and we're still on photos. Now, one of the things right next to photos you'll notice is this weird icon right here. This is what I like to change mine to as big of a preview as possible. You notice how much larger the pictures got. Now it's personal preference if you want to see more towards, you want to see more pictures on one screen, you can make this as big or as small as you choose. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger, especially for this presentation. <clears throat> now, one thing you notice too on the very top here, it'll have photos, which is a hodgepodge of every single picture you have on your computer. And I'm just simply scrolling like we spoke before. And there's a new thing called moments. Moments will actually take very specific pictures that you either look at or you enjoy the most and it'll try and separate it into the moments when they were taken. Collections, when you have a much larger library other than the sample account, will actually split it into months, years, to where you can view 10 years of pictures with one simple scroll. These will become much smaller and you'll have several lines of several different years going over into the years section. Now notice it's only from here because it's the only pictures that I have actually loaded onto this test account. Now if it went back all the way to 1991, it would start at the earliest and go all the way down to 2017. Most of the time you're going to be looking in your photos right here because this is going to be the easiest and quickest way to view your photos. Now the one time that I always recommend to people is that if you're going, if someone wants a picture from a long time ago is when you would want to select years and scroll all the way down to the year and approximate month that it happened because it will actually separate eventually into months. So for the time being, we are actually going to focus on just photos itself. So if you notice here, I'm scrolling through here and this as you can see is a panorama. The panorama is just nothing more than one large stitched together picture so you, will, you can fit a lot more in the frame. This is what you typically see in a standard frame. Now notice I'm on a big preview of this picture here. Now I can go right here and click back. And you notice it takes me back to the main library of pictures I have. However, if you move your mouse to the left or right, you'll see guide arrows come up. Now as you see, as I click on each one of these, it cycles through the pictures that I have on this um, set of photos. So, if I want to go back to my library, I would just click that. Now, know on later versions of iPhoto and Photos, you can also double click and it'll take you back to where you want. So, it's really personal preference on how you want to navigate through your pictures. Now, a lot of people ask, well, how do I make albums? I love albums. And that's a really good question. Firstly, we're going to make an album that includes from this picture right here to this picture right here. 
Now, if you notice when I click it, it turns blue. And later or earlier versions of iPhone it'll actually usually turn it a gold color. But you notice anything I click turns blue. So there's different ways to select multiple pictures. If I start all the way out here, right here, and I click and hold down, just like I want to scroll, uh, change the size of the window, I can scroll across here. You notice anything this window touches, it makes blue. That's one way to select. You can also click the first picture of the set and hold down the shift key before you click this one. And you notice it makes them all blue. You can also, let's say for example, you wanted this picture and this picture and not this picture and this picture. Now you can do the same shift technique where you click once, you hold down the shift button and it selects all of them. Now to unselect this without unselecting the entire group like I just did there, you click and I will hold shift before I click this and click it. Now right next to your space bar on both sides of any Macintosh keyboard, you will find a command button. If you hold command button, you will notice it lets me unselect that. So let's say, for example, I wanted not this picture of the door, but I wanted this picture of the door. As long as I'm holding command, I can pick any set of pictures that I want, and I can also unselect any set of pictures I want. Now, once I have the pictures I selected, I can go right up to File, and I can do a new album. See right here, new album. And what's nice about the new features of Photos is that it shows you that there are three photos selected. So if you accidentally selected all of them and it said 3,000, you would know that you need to go back and select the photos properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file a new album. I'm going to click on that. And you notice it says untitled. <clears throat> now one thing about all computers on all files is that if it's already highlighted, if I start typing, it's going to automatically delete it out. So notice I just named it. Hamez, which is the place of where these pictures were taken. Things about albums that a lot of people get confused is a lot of people think that these pictures are now moved into this album only. However, that is not the case. If I delete a picture, and I can delete it by several different ways, you can right click, delete photo, or if you're a keyboard person, you can hold command and hit delete. So I'm going to hold command and then I'm going to tap the delete button. And notice it says, I've been removed from the album. That does not mean, though, that it's being removed from the library. And this is one of the most important things I tell everyone when it comes to using photos, is that you, if you want to delete from the library, that's fine, but that is the same equivalent of taking a book off a shelf and throwing it into the fireplace. It puts it in recently deleted, which will ultimately eventually delete off the computer itself. However, albums are nothing more than copies of it. So you can, you can delete single pictures in the album, you can uh, two finger click or control click and delete the whole album itself, delete. And if you notice, if I go back to photos though, they have never left. The only time you are permanently deleting things out is when you delete from the library itself. And this is a very important tip to know for anyone that's going to be using photos. So as you scroll through your photos, you'll notice that you can click on certain photos and they'll get larger. So for example, I'm just going to pick a random photo and I'm going to double click it. This is just your standard view of photos. It brings a little bit bigger version of what you've already seen. Now, one thing I do like, and we are going to go over different editing features later in other videos, but I do like the information button. The neat thing about this is that it tells you almost everything you'd ever want to know about it. Um, now this one is a little bit uh, limited because I transferred this from an account to this test account, but it will say what type of camera took it, you know, what was the f-stop, what's the resolution. So if you're going to go print the picture, it's really nice to be able to just hit this little I button and know if it's a high enough resolution to be able to print and what size you'd be able to print to. Now if you take it with your iPhone or any uh, device that has GPS, it will also tell you where it was taken when it was taken, and a little bit more information about the actual uh, geolocation of the device that was used and where the, uh, the picture was taken. Now remember, just like before, if I want to go back to my library, I can either double click this picture or I can hit this little back arrow. I always like to think of this back arrow like surfing the internet. If you want to go back, you just hit the back. Now notice it takes me back to this. Now, one other thing about photos, if you'll notice in here, I'm going to find a video about it, but you can you can watch videos by double clicking it. Like if this were a video, for example, you double click and it would have a play button right here. Um, I do not have any videos loaded on this one. Um, however, oh, here's one right here, for example. So let's say, for example, I wanted to watch this video. 
<coughs> excuse me. So you'll notice when I move my mouse over top, it'll play a live view of the video. However, that's a very small thing to see. So just remember with photos, if you double click, see this right here? This is the play button, just like a VCR or a DVD player. If I hit play, it's going to start playing. Now notice, until I move my mouse off, that will not disappear. So what I like to do is anywhere in this gray area, I actually move this up out of the content of the video, and then I hit play. So as you can see, it will just play through the video until it ends. Now same scenario, you can go back right here, or you can double click to go back. It's your personal preference. And I am scrolling this entire time just by using two fingers on a trackpad, moving up and down, I'm not clicking or pushing, I'm just lightly touching it. Or if you have an Apple Magic Mouse, you can use one finger and scroll just by uh, taking your index finger and moving it up and down on the top of the mouse. So now that we got the basics of going around and navigating through here, we will be able to make albums by clicking once again. You click it once and it's blue. Now I'm going to hold the shift before I click. And remember, it makes them all that. If I want to make these six photos, as you can see here, I can go to File, New Album. Now notice it even has six photos because it tells me exactly how many are going into the album. Don't forget that albums are also copies, so you can feel free to delete an album any time. I always look at albums as really quick references to where if someone's like, hey, remember Christmas 1994? If you have an album of it, it would be right over here in my album so you can quickly cl click to it instead of scrolling through and hoping for the best. Now don't forget also, notice these are all blue. If I wanna only select one, notice I'm gonna hold the command button, and notice that takes that blue ring away. Because let's say, for example, I wanted this picture. Notice to put the blue ring on. I'm holding the command button right next to the space bar the entire time. So you know now how to make uh, albums and how to scroll through, double click to see larger versions of your imagery, and you can go back here. And remember also on the very top left hand side, you can see less or less pictures or more pictures, depending on however you feel good. I personally like to make them a little bit larger, even though it's a lot more scrolling, I like to be able to see a little bit bigger resolution of my thumbnail preview. All right, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We're going to have several more of these courses that are going to go over the ins and outs of several programs such as Photos, iMovie, basics of using your Mac, navigating your Mac, making your Mac your own, and personalizing your Mac. Because as you can see, you don't always want to have necessarily just a standard desktop. With Photos, I will show you in the next lesson how to actually set your desktop to the photo of your choosing. Appreciate tuning in, and I'll see you friends next time.